We know that 22,000 Americans die each year because they don't have health insurance. But that is only part of the story because every one of those 22,000 is a unique and irreplaceable individual. Somebody's mother, somebody's son, numbers cannot convey the injustice of it all, the needless pain for families and friends. Every year, this country produces 22,000 unnecessary stories of loss and suffering. 22,000 stories that could go unwritten if we act now. These stories are everywhere we look, if we look. Last week, I got a short note from a man in Pina Blanca, New Mexico. The man wrote, and I quote, we never made enough money. My wife and I have been self-employed craftsmen for 25 years. We never made enough money for health insurance. My wife now has terminal colon cancer. If she could have had a colonoscopy at 50 years old, she would not be dying at 54. My heart is broken. If we don't get health care legislation passed, thousands of women, like my constituent in Pena Blanca, won't get their colonoscopies, and thousands more hearts will be broken like her husband's. I don't care where you stand in this body, that's not a victory for anybody. A couple of weeks ago, I heard a story about a constituent who had come to my office for some casework a few years ago. This is one of those people who you would expect to do great things. Then John began suffering from a host of unexplained neurological problems. The problems got so bad that he was actually relieved when a doctor told him about a tumor in his brain. He chuckles when he remembers that day. He was so relieved to know what was wrong with him, and his doctor said that something could be done. But John's insurance company had other ideas. Months went by, and John was not approved for the operation his doctor recommended. Only just recently was he approved for the procedure he needs. But now he has other problems. His medical leave is about to run out and he doesn't know what to do. If he loses his job, he loses his insurance. And if he loses that, he could lose everything. He will become just another American whose pre-existing condition prevents him from getting health care. John was supposed to be one of the lucky ones. Before he began having problems, he assumed that he was one of the 55% of New Mexicans who have adequate health insurance. But John was just one illness away from the edge and he is not alone. When I was back in New Mexico over the 4th of July recess, I stopped at a local TV station for an interview. I went to the front desk to check in and introduce myself to the woman sitting there. It was like I touched a nerve. Senator Udall, she said, I need your help. This woman works full time and she has health insurance through her work. Not so long ago, her doctor told her she needs cataract surgery or she will lose her sight. On Monday before I met her, she was scheduled to get that surgery. Then days before her appointment, she was informed that the deductible would be more than $2,200, not including the cost of any follow-up care. Like many Americans, she has been struggling to make ends meet in this economy. She cannot spare $2,200 from her paycheck, so she canceled her operation. Now she's, now she's afraid she'll lose her sight, and she doesn't know what to do. So when a United States Senator walked through the door, she asked me for help. Madam President, we can help this woman. We, should, we shouldn't have to choose between paying, she shouldn't have to choose between paying her rent and keeping her sight. Nobody should, and we can make it so. We can create a system where people can find and afford to pay for quality health insurance that provides the care they need. And we can create a system where people do not have to worry that they are one layoff away from losing their insurance or one medical emergency away from losing everything. We can guarantee quality, affordable health insurance to every American. 